2021 was an interesting year in gaming. It was the first full year of the next gen console and still nobody can get their hands on one. It was an absolute ordeal for me to get mine. I was fully waking up at 5 a.m. for rumored drops of the PS5. Do you know how heartbreaking it is to be up at the early hours of the morning, tired as hell, staring at your monitor, only for the rumor to have been complete bullcrap. The person who started it is like, <laughs> sorry guys, false alarm. What do you mean false alarm? What, what was your source? I don't know, I just, I, I kind of felt a vibe, you know? I did everything to get my PS5. I signed up to a bunch of websites I never heard of in my life. What the hell is AO.com? I don't know, but they might have a PS5. I had stock tracking live streams and websites running in the background at all times. I joined Discord servers. I followed Twitter accounts with notifications turned on. I don't even have notifications on for DMs. People be texting me and I have to guess when I get a message. Some of these Twitter accounts were absolutely useless, by the way. How am I gonna follow IGN UK deals for alerts on PS5 stock? And you're tweeting about J2O being on sale. Do I have to fight somebody? Eventually, I managed to get my PS5 from Amazon. Shout out to PS5 Instant on Twitter for being the only account that actually helped. Although they have been suspended now, so I don't know what they did. Anyway, I'm glad I was able to secure one at last, but I cannot be bothered to go through all that again. Which sucks because I really want a new graphics card and I can't get one. You got the crypto miners to thank for that. Crypto, blockchain, and more specifically NFTs peered their heads through the gaming space this year to a lot of people's dismay. The new phrase that's getting thrown around is play to earn, which if you're like five, then maybe that sounds like an amazing idea. I can play games to make money, which I can then use to buy more games. But if you got your wits about you, then play to earn sounds like a dystopian reality where people play games in order to cover their rent instead of playing them because of the intrinsic enjoyment of the game itself. Wait, isn't that just Twitch streamers? Oh, they got their rent covered. Didn't you see the leaks? One good thing to come out of the leaked Twitch earnings is that maybe now people will stop complaining about women abusing their assets in order to get ahead in streaming, considering that not one of them was in the top 10, 20, or even 30 earners on the platform. Hot tub streams are an odd phenomenon though, I won't lie to you. People are really out here getting off to Twitch streams. There are other sites. I mean, I won't name them, but there are other sites. Speaking of people being horny on main, the witch lady from Resident Evil 8 was really popular last year. And you know what? I think tall women have been getting the short end of the stick for too long, and I'm happy to finally see some body positivity, even if it was, uh, you know, a lot at times. Resident Evil 8 Village, Lady Dimitrescu with Ultra Bikini Jiggle Physics Costume Mod, all cutscenes. That's a real video on YouTube. You know those other websites I was talking about? People enjoying their games a bit too much, if you know what I mean. <laughs> Apparently, China agrees because they imposed a rule limiting under 18s to only be able to play games between the hours of 8 and 9 p.m. and only on weekends and holidays. Damn, one hour? <laughs> it's like one and a half games of CSGO or four games of Deathloop, which isn't a lot because the actual games only last three minutes, but it takes about 15 minutes to find one. On the note of things that took 15 minutes, Microsoft announced that they would be doubling the price of Xbox Live, only to immediately roll it back when people got angry. Also, in an act of selfless good faith, they announced in their apology post that they would now be allowing free-to-play games to be played on their platform without requiring an Xbox Live subscription. I'm sorry, but am I supposed to believe that this situation was anything other than Microsoft going, all right, we'll tell them we're gonna double the price. If they let us get away with it, great. Straight profit. If instead they get upset, we'll roll it back, we'll apologize, we'll say we're listening to the community, and to sweeten the deal, we'll let them play games that cost zero dollars for free. They'll love us. Something else people loved, GameStop, apparently. Yeah, you know the shop that'll sell you a new game for $60 and then buy it back from you a day later for $10 in store credit? People saw that return on investment and were like, yo, I gotta jump on this. That stock skyrocketed. I can't lie, I fell into the hype and bought some. Did I make a profit? No. Did I lose my money? Uh, yeah. <laughs> but did I learn a lesson? No. I'm gonna invest in Blockbuster next. I think they're gonna make a comeback. Speaking of comebacks, the Grand Theft Auto Trilogy Remaster got released and was so bad that had Rockstar simply re-uploaded exact copies of the game files to Steam, added the words definitive edition to the titles, and then sold them all for $60 a piece. People would have been less disappointed. I personally love the Definitive Edition because the glitches are hilarious and I don't have to pay to watch them on YouTube. One thing I might pay for though is that new Steam Deck. 
Not to be confused with the Stream Deck, I'm sure Elgato loves that. The Steam Deck is a handheld gaming PC being developed by Valve, and so far it looks pretty cool, as well as looking like a knockoff Nintendo Switch, which also got an upgraded version this year, with the addition of an OLED screen and an Ethernet port in the dock, which I can't believe it didn't have before. Just like I can't believe we didn't have a gaming mask before. Have you ever wanted to protect yourself from a highly infectious virus during a global pandemic, while also communicating to the masses that you are a gamer. Well, now you can with Razer's gaming mask. Not only is it effective at filtering air, it's also super effective at ensuring that people stay at least 10 feet away from you. YouTube celebrated hitting 1 trillion total views on Minecraft videos last year and created a website to commemorate the milestone. On the site, you're asked to enter the number of Minecraft videos you've watched so you can calculate your contribution to the overall number. To which I ask, do the cringe compilations count? We're going to refuse that question. Yeah, I'm afraid we're going to have to pass on that one. Sorry. Speaking of cringe, the cast for the upcoming Mario movie was revealed, with such highlights as Seth Rogen voicing Donkey Kong, Jack Black voicing Bowser, and Chris Pratt voicing Mario. I, for one, don't see why they wouldn't just get Mario's original voice actor to voice him, but it seems people are especially dumbfounded by the choice of Chris Pratt specifically. They're probably still upset over what he did in Infinity War, and I don't blame them. On the note of video game properties turned film franchises, we're also getting Idris Elba voicing Knuckles in the upcoming Sonic sequel. It's been a while since I've seen Knuckles in the mainstream. He was quite popular a few years ago, but I can't quite remember exactly do you know what that was for. In any case, against my better judgement, I do hope these movies turn out well. It's nice to see video game properties done justice. For example, people seem to quite like that Witcher show, and I've heard nothing but good things about the new League of Legends series. In fact, the only criticism I have heard for it is that if you watch it, you might experience the rather nasty side effect of being convinced to play League of Legends.